the 13th of February, uh, one day before Valentine's Day. Perhaps that explains why we're both wearing red. Yeah. Lindiwe Mazibuka, it's good to have you on the program. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you very much, Leanne. Good. All right, your expectations for today, what are they? Well, I have expectations and I have hopes. My hopes are that the president will finally deal with the jobs question. What is he going to do to create real jobs, private sector jobs that are going to enable people to have a place on the economic ladder and build lives that they value? What is he going to do about the education and skills development crisis we have in our country? Um, and what is he going to do to stave off these problems of service delivery, where our country is in flames because people are angry about corruption and maladministration uh, in his own government? What I expect he will do is deliver an election uh, so state of the nation and uh, deliver on lots of promises. Uh, I know that Parliament is dealing with legislation to do with land reform, which is very important. We are also do dealing with infrastructure development legislation and I suspect that he will talk about those bills as the ANC drives towards delivering on its promises. But we need the President to the answer the fundamental question of what interventions is the government going to make to clean up the education system and create the jobs that will enable people to live good lives. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've been speaking to the Freedom Front Plus. We spoke to COPE a little bit earlier. We spoke to um, Judith February, political analyst. She felt that previous years the speeches have been uninspiring. Um, the, the two political opposition parties have also been saying uh, there's a lot of pressure on President Jacob Zuma this year for service delivery because people seem very upset in South Africa and they want a lot more. Um, from the DA's perspective, do you share these sentiments? Do you feel that this needs to be the inspiring speech we all need? Absolutely. Um, I believe that it's, it might be too late because he's had five years to deliver that, uh, that inspiring speech uh, and it hasn't happened. And to do so in an election year is simply to get the ANC over the next hurdle of the election in May. Uh, I think it's much more important for the president during his term of office to deliver on those outcomes and to stick to his commitments, which he hasn't done. He has delivered very flat speeches, speeches lacking in inspiration and lacking in promises that can be backed up with any um, policy interventions. All of his promises around the NDP, uh, around staving off corruption he hasn't been able to follow through on and on the issue of corruption he has been the the apex of the corruption crisis that we face in our country with issues like Ngandla and Gupta Gate. So I don't hold out any hope that even if this is an inspiring speech that will lead to any follow through. I think that the voters must take into account the entire uh, five year term and all of the broken promises that he's made in State of the Nation addresses uh, in years past. But for all political parties this will be an election State of the Nation address. So so we will be reviewing the ANC's work over the past five years and making our own offer and I doubtless the president will try to uh, justify the ANC's re-election uh, by doing the same. Well, yesterday, um, the DA making their stand, uh, doing the march to Latuli House, which was called off, it didn't happen. Um, you know, it was un unfortunately marred by violence, marching for real jobs. And many South Africans are sitting right now. And one of their hopes and dreams is that uh, the prospect of unemployment is going to be addressed. The idea behind yesterday's march, many people saying, why did you go ahead and do it? But let's get your perspective. What happened yesterday? First of all, we didn't call off the march. We marched um, in a full circle around Johannesburg. We didn't take the route we were meant to take uh, to Bayes Nordia Square uh, because the ANC had ambushed that area, illegally occupied it and prevented us from getting there. And we weren't able to deliver a memorandum to Lutuli House. But we did march a significant distance through Johannesburg from our point of origin all the way around and back again. Um, and it was marred by violence. ANC uh, members were throwing petrol bombs. Uh, they were throwing stones at our members but I was so proud of our DA colleagues who marched peacefully who didn't engage in violence the point was to give lie and to expose the lie of the ANC's claim that it's going to create six million jobs President Zuma promised five million jobs in 2009 instead we've shed one and a half million jobs since that year and now he's promising six million jobs and he's not even promising real jobs he's promising EPWP extended public works program work opportunities which are the meager salaries that people earn to wave flags at construction sites and engage in other government-led programs. We want jobs in the private sector, jobs with lasting power, and we want an economy that can absorb investment, attract investment locally and internationally, and give people real opportunities to acquire skills and to work in the economy. All right, Ladiwe Mazibuka, the parliamentary leader for the DA, thank you for talking to us. Enjoy today and Thanks good luck much. for the occasion.